Hey everyone, I'm down here on the floor in the name of physics, and I've got a question. I've got this toy car that moves at a constant velocity of 0.76 meters per second, and I'm gonna start at a position of two meters from this wall over here. I'll turn the camera so you can see that. From there to its starting point over here is gonna be two meters. I know the whole length of my classroom is 11.7 meters. So my question is, how many seconds is it gonna take for this car to reach the far wall. Before I actually do this, let's jump to the whiteboard and see if we can use the position equation to calculate how much time it should take for this car to hit the far wall. So here I have written out the problem that we just described, but in the form that you might see on like a worksheet or a test or something. But before we get into solving that, let's take a look at the position equation itself and what each part of it means. So position, we're gonna use the variable x for position. And that comes from sort of the fact that this is a horizontal position that we're looking at. Now, if you notice here, I wrote sub t, and the t just means that this is the position at whatever time we substitute in for the variable t in the equation. A lot of times I'll refer to this as final position, and you might also see this written as x sub f to represent final position. But it really doesn't have to be the final position. It could be the position at any time that we substitute in into the rest of our equation that we're about to write out right here. All right, so what does this position at time t equal? Well, it's gonna equal first the initial position, and that's just gonna be where the object starts in relation to the zero position that we're gonna define, plus velocity times time. The velocity is how fast the object is going, but also the direction that it's going. So in the case of the problem that we're looking at here, I'm gonna define the object moving forward as the positive direction, but if I had that car suddenly start moving backward, then I would need to use a negative velocity to represent that it's going the opposite direction. So whenever you're using this equation, it's really important that you include either the positive or the negative to define which way the object is moving. And finally, the time here is any time that we want to substitute in here to figure out its position at that time. So in the case of this problem, I'm finding out how long it takes or how much time passes for it to hit the far wall. But I could have another problem where I want to know what's the car's position after three seconds have passed, in which case I could substitute in three seconds for T. And then this would give me not the final position, but the position after three seconds have passed. And that's again why we write this X sub T. The T represents that this is the position at any time that we substitute in to our equation over here. So that's our position equation, and we would read it like this. The position equals initial position plus the velocity times the time. All right, let's solve our problem now. It says a toy car that moves 0.76 meters per second starts 2.0 meters from the closest wall. The room's total length is 11.7 meters. How long until the car reaches the far wall? And we say how long we're talking about, how much time. So that's what we're gonna be solving for in the equation here. Notice a problem solving strategy that I use here is I underlined all the important numbers that I'm gonna need, but it's also important, especially as problems get a little bit more challenging, that we don't just blindly substitute those numbers in. I find it really helpful to draw out a picture so I can visualize what I'm trying to figure out. So let's draw out a picture for this. And it doesn't have to be a complicated picture, but it's a way for us to visualize what we're doing in the problem. I find it's best to have things written out in words and pictures and equations. Kind of the more things that we use here, the better we can understand what we're doing. Especially as problems get more challenging and more complicated as we go along in physics. So here I have the total length of the room. Let's define this as the zero position. That's gonna be the close wall. And the far wall then would be at a position of positive 11.7 meters. And so this whole length right here is 11.7 meters. Now the car starts 2.0 meters from the closest wall. So I'm gonna write where that car's starting position is at position 2.0 meters from here. So think about this like a number line. This is at a position of zero, car starts at position of two, and then the far wall is at a position of 11.7. And I know my car is moving 0.76 meters per second. They're in this positive direction, which I'm defining as toward the right. Now that I can picture what's happening in the problem, let's write out our equation here that we already wrote out above. And we're gonna substitute in values that we know. Our final position here, well, we know what our final position is. I wanna know how long until it reaches the far wall. The far wall is at a position of 11.7 meters equals our initial position. That's where our car is starting. Our car is starting at a position of 2.0 meters. So I'm gonna substitute that in there. I know my car's velocity is 0.76 meters per second in the positive direction. And you know what? I'm gonna add this in. I should have written a positive here. 
positive 0.76 meters per second because velocity isn't just how fast it's moving, it's also which direction it's moving. So I need to include either a positive or a negative whenever I write my velocities there. So velocity times my time, and I don't know how long this is gonna take yet, so that's my variable. And again, in other problems, we might know the time that it takes to get to some position. We're solving for position, or maybe we're solving for velocity. You have to read the context of the problem to know which variable you're solving for. All right, let's do a little bit of algebra real quick. I'm gonna subtract two meters from both sides. I'm gonna get 9.7 meters equals zero. Two minus two is zero. Write out the rest of my problem there. Then I'm gonna divide by that velocity of 0.76 meters per second. And then I'm gonna get that the time is 12.763 seconds. My units do work out. The meters will divide out with meters. This seconds will move to the top here because it's on the denominator, but on the denominator again. And it's important that the units do work out. If this was in meters and this was in centimeters per second, I can't just divide those. I would need to convert those units to where they're in the same units. So just always double check. Make sure that the units are gonna work out. If you got something in meters, something in centimeters or something like that, you're gonna have to convert. Now, 12.763 seconds, I don't know this value to that precision, like to the, to the millisecond. There's too much uncertainty in the measurements that I took. I don't know, I'm not gonna get this right down to the millisecond. Really, I need to look at the sig figs of precision I have here. If I look at all my starting numbers, this has two sig figs, that has two sig figs, this has three. The fewest number of sig figs I have in any of my measurements is two. So to report out my final answer, I'm gonna to need to round this to two sig figs. So I only know this precision to about 13 seconds. Great, so we have our answer. One thing I wanna talk about before we go, you might be saying, hey, Mr. Siebert, you know what? You just did a lot of work for a problem that I could have just kind of done in my head almost. For example, I didn't need to write out all this stuff to know that, okay, if it starts at two and it ends at 11.7, that it's going 9.7 meters. I could have just done that in my head. Yeah, definitely. There's more than one way to solve this problem. And in fact, if you did that in your head, you're kind of implicitly using something called the displacement equation then. Let me show you. Displacement is how far did you end up from where you started? And we use the variable delta x to represent displacement. That triangle looking symbol is delta, and that just means the change in a variable. So delta x means change in position. Change in position we call displacement. And again, that's just how far it is from where it started. You can calculate displacement by taking an object's final position minus its initial position. And that's what you just did in your head, right? 11.7 meters minus its initial position of two meters to give you 9.7 meters. So when we subtracted that initial position, we got final position minus initial position. We can write this as displacement delta x. And what do you have that equal to? Well, you've got velocity times time left over. So really this displacement equation is the same thing as this position equation, just written a little bit different. You can use either one. Sometimes the context of a problem makes one equation a little bit easier to use than the other, but they're really the same thing written two different ways. If you use this displacement equation, you get the same thing. The displacement was 9.7 meters. The velocity is 0.76. We're solving for time. You divide by 0.76 on each side, and you'd again get that time is 13 seconds. All right, that equation is all great and good, but what's the point if physics doesn't actually work? Let's do this and see if it actually takes 13 seconds to hit the wall. It's followed here. Sorry about the bad camera work. Now it's going nice and straight. Very good, very good. Let's see there. There it goes. Look at that. Pretty good, right? Pretty good. Another tip, it's best not to do physics by yourself. It's best to bring in some backup. You ready, soldiers?